A very good evening, friends. I am very delighted to welcome my friend, Mr. Rajiv Bhatia, President and Country Head for Analytics Solutions. He is going to be sharing his own experiences, as much I know, is a couple of other sides other than being a CEO and the leader mentor. So, on behalf of uh, Ahmedabad Management Association, um, uh, allow me to welcome him formally, sir. So friends, uh, Mr. Rajiv Bhatia is President and Country Head of the Analytics Business Solutions India Private Limited, an outsourcing company which is specializing in providing technology-oriented, enabled and value-driven solutions that help businesses succeed by focusing on growth and profitability. He is responsible for guiding and operations and managing the growth of the organizations, uh, which I am personally a witness to it. During his career of more than 35 years, Mr. Bhatia has handled delivery and leadership roles in multiple companies across the various business segment of analytics solutions. He is quite adept at growing teams, leading change management programs and creating value for all internal and external stakeholders. In various roles over the years, uh, Rajiv has been an integral part of the growth journey of large, medium and small organizations. He is a proven change management leader and has led businesses and teams to success during the periods of uncertainty and market transition and uh, so to say the COVID call is one of them. Mr. Rajiv acquired a baseless degree in commerce from Sri Ram College of Commerce, New Delhi, and, and he is an MBA Finance from National University of Singapore, NSU. He has been associated with PNB, US Bank, Accenture, WMS, DLF Primarica, KCA, QX Global, and Tata Consultancy Services in the past. He has recently been honored with the National Best Employer Award. 2021 on behalf of the leadership team at Analytics Solutions during the 29th edition of World HRD Congress. We are very delighted to welcome you here, sir, and we are happy to hear you and listening eagerly for you. Uh, before that, I would like to add, sir, that Ahmedabad Management Association is very, um, as you know, it was founded by Vikram Sarabhai and it is, has a legacy, legacy of its own. For the 19th time, this year, we have received the Best Management Association Award uh, very recently. It was given in the New Delhi. It's a matter of proud for us. And we are very consistently performing to uh, live up to your expectations of all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Allow me to welcome Mr. Rajiv. Good evening, everybody. And really thankful for this honor. Uh, really, really indebted to Ahmedabad Management Association and Mr. Shailesh in particular, uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Unmesh Dikshit as well. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be associated with uh, Ahmedabad Management Association. I recall my earlier uh, interactions as well. I remember we did a seminar in this very room uh, in terms of how to maintain work-life balance and, and also, uh, uh, you know, we had actually had a client come over and give a talk in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what are the benefits of a vegan life, you know, having a vegetarian or a vegan diet or so, so to speak. Um, and um, one of the things that I must mention is that uh, Ahmedabad Management Association has been extremely, extremely, uh, you know, in, in, in layman terms, a very clean organization, an organization which just follows uh, you know, very strong ethics and principles and, and uh, morals as well. And that's why I didn't really think twice before coming here and kind of, you know, talking about uh, what I really am passionate about, uh, my hobbies and how I found them extremely uh, connected to my professional pursuits as well. So if you allow me, I'll kind of talk about, uh, uh, you know, how to combine your hobbies with your profession. And the intention here is uh, that possibly what worked for me 
may also work for some of you. Uh, I see some old timers like me, uh, and I'm sure that they would be also, uh, you know, they'll kind of identify in terms of what I'll talk about. Uh, but uh, uh, just to, you know, give you a perspective, uh, I started <coughs> two of my hobbies, and we'll talk about that during the presentation. Um, and I thought that probably I'll not have time, I'll not, you know, I'll not have much of use of them, but they really helped me in my professional pursuit. And that's why I wanted to kind of share that uh, understanding with all of you. And maybe I strike a chord with some of you in terms of sharing. There are people in my team who are sitting here and I constantly encourage them to kind of, you know, uh, follow your dreams, follow your hobbies. Uh, maybe, who knows, maybe tomorrow you could actually commercialize or monetize it, you know. So I'll just move on. As you can see, uh, the human mind is a boundless canvas and hobbies are, are the colors that sort of expand its potential. Uh, and this, this is really true. Uh, you know, one may think that, uh, that you know, you can put some kind of a boundaries to what you can think that you can do and imagine, um, uh, but hobbies can actually help you in terms of think of the unimaginable and think of, uh, you know, having no limits in terms of what you can achieve or so. And I'll share in terms of why I say that. Just a small definition in terms of what is a hobby, and if you look at the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it's a pursuit outside one's regular occupation, especially for relaxation. Please note the, the definition in there. It's a pursuit outside one's regular occupation, which means you're not doing something which you do professionally. And also to summarize, it's an activity or a pursuit that an individual engages in voluntarily, which means there's no external pressure, there's no societal pressure, there's nobody who's pushing you to do it, it's coming from within. And you do it for your own pleasure and satisfaction, rather not for any monetary gains or for any external obligations. Now while I say that, that you don't do it for monetary gains or external obligations, my personal experience has been that it actually can help you even improve in terms of your external obligations or monetary gains or so, and without actually diluting the significance of your hobby as well. I'll just give some examples and th you know, this is just for reference, some of the hobbies that are typically followed by all of us when you ask a physical or an active hobby like hiking, archery, campus, uh, camp uh, camping, running, even tennis, I would say, uh, or any physical sport, creative and craft hobbies, which is painting, knitting, pottery, etc. Mental hobbies, which is reading, blogging, learning, solving, etc. Musical, you follow your musical pursuits, uh, singing, playing, instrumental music. Collection hobbies, which is collecting stamps, coins, books as well. And of course, the professional hobbies like photography, designing, poster making and anchoring. And I'll give you some examples in terms of how some of my own life uh, examples and of uh, you know, my friends and associates who've been really able to benefit from some of these hobbies or so. There's a very strong myth or a false belief that hobbies cannot be pursued with work or your regular profession. And some of the common, common myths are pursuit of career. So, you know, all of us will say, well, I am pursuing a career. I cannot pursue this hobby. I am having a time crunch. I will not be able to devote this much of time to it. There are deadlines to complete. There is competition. If I pursue my hobby, uh, the people that I'm competing with will actually get ahead of me. There's lack of confidence. Uh, you know, this hobby is more of a, what, what we call as bathroom singing or what we call as, you know, 
closet drawing or writing or poetry and things like that. So there's lack of confidence that, you know, I'm no good. I'm just good for my own self. It's no good to be shared with people outside. Resource availability, which means if I have to actually follow it, then I need some money, I need some time, I need some effort. So there's resource availability or a resource crunch. There's unrealistic or perfectionist expectations. If I follow a hobby, then I have to be a perfectionist. I have to be absolutely brilliant. Only then I'll be able to, you know, sort of make a mark into it. I think these are all myths. I think these are all false beliefs that we ourselves put some conditions on, some bound, you know, foundations on. So uh, I think this, these are all, my personal case, I found that these are all, uh, you know, wrong assurances that we give to ourselves. You know, I've, I've completed about 35 years of, of work now and I realized that when you reach a certain point in your career, you need to look within uh, that if you have to make that, you know, that effort between good to great, you have to expand your potential. And that does not necessarily come from working more or, you know, working even smarter. You've got to add that creative element in your work or so. You know, you have to think in terms of without any fear, without any structure also. And it generally comes when you train your mind differently. When you, when you say that, you know, I'm not going to, uh, uh, you know, kind of create certain things just as per expectations. I'll think creatively. And that's where hobbies come into play. That's where you, you can tap into the creative pursuit as your escape. And it will bring in new thought dimensions, new ways of looking at things or so. What are some of my hobbies? Actually, two of them, and the two of them where I can say that I follow them with all passion and heart. One is poetry, and the second is tennis. And uh, and who said poets can't be good tennis players or good tennis players can't be poets? You can be average at both of them, but if they give you satisfaction and joy, I think they, you know, that's enough. That's you know, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. And uh, uh, why I said that is, and there's a strange, uh, you know, connection I found between poetry and tennis. I thought that poetry is a beautiful art form because you're putting in raw emotions, whereas tennis is all physical. Tennis is all running about, tennis is power, tennis is, you know, uh, trying to actually survive in the court for about one or two hours and trying to output your opponents as well. So one is pure, pure creative and the second is pure physical. So I thought if I follow these two and there was no science or method into following these hobbies or so. I just like them. And that's the first condition I put. You should just like a particular thing. There should not be any reason in terms of why you like them. But uh, it was strange that, you know, these kind of take care of my physical and mental faculties, so to speak, you know. So, um, the fact that I am not insane, the fact that I have not turned mad after 35 years of work is possibly because of these two hobbies that I pursue. And as I said, the left side is taken care by the poetry and the right side is taken care by the uh, tennis part of it. I did not do that badly or I would like to believe that I did not do, do, do that badly in terms of the hobbies that I pursue. I have written a couple of books. One of them is shown here called Whispers of My Soul. It was published in 2019. Uh, and... Um, it gave me an immense creative satisfaction. It very momentarily became a bestseller, very, very momentarily, I would say probably for about a week or so, because it got sold out at Amazon in that particular week or so. Uh, but that's enough for me. I, I was not looking for any commercial success out of it. In fact, what I thought was that I will actually uh, donate the money that I get out of the proceeds a, uh, to a social organization called Handicapped Children Rehabilitation Association. Uh, so I wrote this poetry book just to kind of, you know, satisfy my own uh, creative pursuit. 
Tennis I actually picked up only in Ahmedabad. I first time picked up a racket almost about 10 years, 11 years back when I came to Ahmedabad. And uh, the I was staying in Kalhar, uh, you know, in Shilaj. And, uh, and I just walked out the first day from my guest house and there were, you know, a bunch of people playing. And they were very welcoming. They were very, you know, they, they said, why don't you come over? And I hardly knew them. And they said, you come over. And I said, I've never held a racket. I've played cricket for my school and my state and things like that. And they said, never mind. I mean, you know, just pick up the racket and start playing. And as they say, once a sportsman, always a sportsman. So that kind of helped. Um, and then, you know, when you start playing or doing something, if you have a competitive edge, then you try to be better at it. Then you try to think of ways and means to be better at it. I cannot be playing with players who are extremely good and you know I, I, I can't be losing while playing with them. So I had to think in terms of ways to survive in that group and therefore I, I started playing you know I started sort of mentally rehearsing. I started you know when I came to when I used to come to office I used to say Aaj wo law mara. you know I didn't smash it well I didn't really uh, you know, had a good game and things like that. In terms of poetry as well, uh, when I started writing, it started like a typical, what you call as a, a closet poet. In fact, one of my poems is actually got a poet in the closet, where you're hiding from everybody and actually writing a poem. Um, and then, you know, as um, it was just an extension of something that I did in college, and um, and my parents had encouraged me at that point in time. But then you have your career. You know, everybody says you have to follow your career. You have to do an MBA, which is a mandatory. Mere baap ki arzu, you know, as they call it. Uh, so you have to follow that. Uh, you know, societal norms in terms of being successful, and only then think in terms of uh, uh, you know following a hobby or a creative pursuit or so. And so for I think about. 10 years I st sort of stopped writing but I didn't think that my the poet in me had died I had not written anything but then again when um, maybe I thought that I've arrived at a certain level in terms of life that's that's the time when I sort of started writing again without any burden of being successful without any burden of actually impressing or pleasing people it was written just for my own self and I will, I will talk, uh, you know, in the forthcoming slides in terms of what are some of the restrictions that we place on ourselves when we sort of try and follow a hobby. So in terms of tennis, I've been playing or learning since last 12 years. I have professionally played, it's actually a wrong word, it's not professionally, it's amateurly played 10 tournaments. And one, one tournament and being runners up in two tournaments and I hope to improve that record. <laughs> Uh, from here on uh, and the last tournament that I was the runners up was just about a week back and it was a Gujarat State Tennis Association one of the recognized tournaments or so and it was uh, over 35 I am well over 35 so you know that gave me another high that I am competing with people who are 10 15 years younger or so and I just want to talk about some of the reality. You know, I talked about the myth that, you know, I can't do it because of time crunch. I can't do it because of lack of resources. I am, you know, it's not good enough and things like that. I'll just talk about some of the actual realities that I, uh, uh, you know, sort of, I uh, actually experienced it while uh, I started following these hobbies or so. I personally feel that if you follow something and that something can be anything, it really keeps your creative juices flowing, it reflects into your work because, because you've, you've followed your hobby, you can use the same amount of creativity in your own work and see how can I add that another dimension of it or so, how can I do something about it and then again give some live examples in the slides that follow. So it actually helps you in terms of being more creative in terms of your work. It brings mindfulness. Now this is a very, it's a buzzword. Everybody talks about mindfulness. It's that state where 
for some moment of time you you forget about what you are actually doing and you practice what you call as vacuum so mindfulness is thinking in a vacuum now when i play tennis or when i write poetry i still have my deadlines to follow i still have my you know as they call it difficult emails to answer but while the time i'm playing the tennis or i'm writing a po poem i forget about all those difficult uh, you know life situations and i actually am concentrating on creating something so there's more awareness in the present and there's also a sinking of bi mind body and heart and that's why i say that you know during that time that i'm thinking in a vacuum allows me to be more creative and and think of how can i answer that particular difficult email or so or how can i sort of solve a, a you know a difficult problem that is faced with me and that helps me in my leadership as well of course it helps me network professionally so when i went to meet with some fellow poets you know i've been to a couple of uh, gatherings or so you know you get to know i'm a part of a couple of uh, uh, you know instagram groups where there are like minded poets or so so you exchange notes you talk about you know i learned what they call as the writers block you have what you call as the writers block there are days when i really want to write and i can't write because there is a writers block you know you cannot tell your mind that i'm going to write a poem right now because that's the way you know the mind doesn't think like that it's only when you know wo kehte na jab keeda hoga to apne aap aa jayega so uh, but it helps you network professionally you meet like minded people i have met a lot of tennis players as well uh, and made some extremely good friends and then what you try and find to do is i met a couple of doctors yesterday who play tennis very well and i found that they actually you know how their mind would operate you know their surgeons very very well known surgeons of this city and they play and they probably do surgery the same way as they play tennis so um, and i hope i am not one of their patients or so to speak <laughs> uh but it also keeps you active mentally both physically and mentally you know you are very active because if you follow your uh hobbies you know you are kind of uh fulfilling a certain gap which your normal work will not be able to fulfill so it keeps you active and healthy it gives your life a balance and why i say a balance because your success or your joy is not necessarily uh linked to your work or your achievements i today am talking probably because of my work achievements or so but i am very proud that i am talking of that you know if i have written a book i am more proud of the fact that i have written a book uh rather than that i have 35 years of experience and you know i've done probably reasonably well in my professional life or so it also helps to counterbalance your professional challenges so as i said uh i might be down because i've had a bad year performance wise or professionally but if i probably written a book but if i probably written a book or if i probably won a tournament this year or so it kind of counterbalances that failure or that potential failure that i've seen in my life in this year or so it also gives you a very different high you know the moment i uh, i've written a uh, a small blog as well where i said that uh, the fact that i was able to grow a team from 10 to about 1000 people in accenture it gave me the same i as when i saw my book actually in my hand or when i held a small 200 rupees trophy in my hand in terms of tennis or so it gave me the same high because it was for something that i am not well known about it was for something that i have not really labored enough that's purely out of my interest which has come through it also gives you a chance to commercialize your skills if you probably end up doing well uh, in terms of writing or whatever you can monetize it you can start selling those that creative ideas that you want and maybe not for too much of money 
uh, but we'll see examples that there are people who are extremely successful with their pursuit of hobbies as well. And lastly, I think it gives you an opportunity to be a mind coach or a performance coach for self and others. Uh, when I'm doing poetry or when I'm playing tennis, I'm my own mind coach. I kind of t tell myself, I lost this set, but this is how I'll probably play in terms of strategy to uh, you know win the next set or so or, or write the next book or so. That kind of helps me in my professional approach also that you know I've had a bad quarter. This is what maybe I can do to help improve it or so. So it can give you an opportunity to be your own mind coach or a performance coach. And again uh, the reason I say that is these are all buzzwords. Everybody says you know contact a performance coach or a mind coach who will tell you in terms of how to succeed in life, but you can be your own uh, mind coach or so. I'll give you two examples and these are real life examples of my life. I had a classmate in school and uh, actually in class 10 and he was a science student and I went into commerce after you know 11th, I mean in 11th I went into commerce stream and he went to the science stream and he used to actually make small sculptures, you know, uh, or pottery things or so. And uh, he used to make it just for the heck of it, just because he liked doing that. And, you know, in class sixth, somebody have, would have taken him to a pottery class or so uh, in school and he started making it. And uh, one fine day, he made something very interesting and the school submitted that to uh, you know, the National Gallery of Modern Arts or whatever, and that got selected. And they said that this, this, uh, this boy is about, you know, he studies in class 10 or so. He got the uh, President of India scholarship of 75 rupees. Uh, and it continued till he graduated from college because they wanted to encourage that person to now what he had to do was every month he had to go and submit one one creative sculpture or whatever or so and uh, but that was not important and that guy was i mean this friend of mine was pretty rich so he actually owned a bullet you know and i'm talking about almost 30 years back so he used to go all the way half the city to actually submit that thing to the to his mentor or whatever and that mentor used to then sign off that check or so you know that that's the way it used to happen but what happened is that all of us appeared for the MBA exams at that time all of us appeared you know it was the in fashion thing to appear for an MBA exam and writing the IMs and the you know the IM Ahmedabad and this thing and uh, he got selected so did we but he got actually admitted we didn't and the only reason was that they asked him in the interview, they asked me also something in the interview, maybe I answered something that was not really, you know, helpful, but they asked him as to, we believe that you make some, some sculpture or some pottery and all that stuff, uh, how does it help you? And he said that uh, it's a three-dimensional art and it gives you, you know, gives me, allows me to think creatively and I can think creatively in terms of my problems and solutions and things like that. He got selected into uh, I am Ahmedabad and XLRI and eventually did this graduation and uh, we kept asking him, today he is actually the owner of a very, very big software firm, he is the owner and when we meet in parties and we say, what was the reason of your success and he says, Uta murti banata tha. you know, so he said that. So. I think that's where a hobby actually made his life or so. And similarly, Air Rifle, another friend of mine, actually, and this is a story I keep telling to everybody. Uh, he, when we were all playing cricket and hockey, his father actually gifted him a rifle, an air gun, so to speak. And he used to actually smash all the street lights, you know, of the street or so, so much so that the association actually went and complained to his parents that, Iska kya kar rahe ho? Ye sari street lights so they actually got him admitted into the uh, national stadium in Delhi and nobody used to go for rifle shooting at that point in time, nobody, everybody went into 
football, hockey and cricket and things like that. And Barry, I mean we call him Barry, his name was Barinder. He was a, a Sikh gentleman, I mean Sikh uh, friend of ours. So he went into this air rifle shooting and there were a total of four, four children who used to go and study that. I mean rifle shooting or so. And uh, in the Delhi state, three were to be selected. The third one got sick and our friend got into that team or so and he got that Delhi state rifle uh, you know, team membership, you would say or so. So he became a state level player kind of a thing. And because he became a state level player, he got into Delhi College of Engineering. Because he got into Delhi College of Engineering, he went to U US and uh, there again he got into, you know, admission into one of the top universities of New Jersey or New York or so. Again on the basis of not his engineering degree, but because on basis of that shooting thing because he said I am a state level shooter and they said you will be able to contribute I mean in terms of diversity of uh, this thing so we have a national level shooter also amongst us also. Today he owns five houses in Miami uh, in US and uh, again as an alumni turnout uh, he's probably one of the top ten richest guys from our school or so and we again asked him, what did you do differently? And he says, Bas wo rifle chala tha tha. You know, so uh, these are all examples in terms of how you can actually use your hobbies or creative pursuits into things which can help you in life. Now, just for a hobby to be an impactful pursuit, I think, uh, I mean, I've said all good things about hobbies or so, uh, but I must, I must put some conditions or caveats so to speak. It must be a self-discovery. I can't teach you to, you know, follow a particular hobby just because you, you know, you, uh, I am telling you to do it or so. It must be a self-discovery that you are good at a certain thing or bad at a certain thing and you want to follow it or so. There should be no burden of success. There should be absolutely no burden that you put on yourself that Mirko is my succeed hona hi hona hai. It's your hobby. Forget about it. I mean, you know, it's just something that you do out of pleasure. So there should be no this thing saying I'm following a hobby. I have to be, you know, I have to write a bestseller in terms of writing a book or something. There must be inclination to learn. See, hobby is is good, but unless and until you really pick up as to, you know, what are the different kind of themes or, or yawners that one may follow in a particular hobby or so. Are there any schools of painting? Are there any, you know, particular styles that people follow? Now I've started writing poetry, so I've tried to understand how the Japanese write, how the British write, how the Americans write. Is it more abstract and things like that? So that's just out of interest. That's not to learn something, but just out of interest in terms of what are the various ways. And so there must be some inclination to learn. And you don't f follow it as a project, but as a pursuit, just for your own creative satisfaction. You must do a mental rehearsal of it, which means you mentally must rehearse it. You cannot uh, do a thing and then forget about it. You must sort of mentally rehearse it also. And it should not be, you know, this is again one line which I really find very useful in today's life is it should not be compulsive. You can't tell your children that, oh, you must have a hobby or something. If he, if he has that streak, he or she has that streak, then, you know, then they'll follow it. It should not be compulsive, but it, there should be a conscious uh, sort of decision or so. So it is, to my mind, an escape it's an escape from your normal day-to-day -day work, but it's an escape into an improved reality. So that's that's uh, that's what you have to really, you know, kind of put some conditions in terms of hobby being an impactful pursuit. Some examples, Mark Zuckerberg started this Facebook, $562 billion. It's, it was just started as a hobby in terms of connection of dormitory friends. He's made some money out of it. And we were joking when we were putting together this slide that uh, even if he gives us one hundredth of what he has made, that's enough. Um, 
there's a small story about Picasso, the, the famous painter, that he was approached by somebody in a restaurant, a lady approached and he said, can you draw me something on this napkin, you know, paper napkin or whatever. And he drew that and she says, I'll, I mean, you ask for me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. So he drew something in two minutes and gave it to her and she says, how much? He says, $10,000. And uh, she said, but you took only two minutes to draw it. He says, but I took 20 years to practice it also. So 20 years of practice have gone into making these two minutes of uh, drawing or so. Harley Davidson, uh, hobby of two friends who saw this as a innovative bicycle design, so to speak. Again, this was a hobby, so to speak. And we have the two contemporary writers, Rashmi Bansal and Chetan Bhagat, uh, from across the, across the road. Uh, I am Ahmedabad graduates who returned to book writing or so. And then we have Anish as well now, who's written so many mythological books or so. So these are some examples where people have followed their heart. They have followed their uh, mind and actually tried to commercialize and monetize that also. In the end, I'll just mention that, you know, this is a very famous Walt Disney quote, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. And I'll probably ask some, I mean, ask you for some questions, but there's again a story uh, that I have, and I, this is my favorite story, and I keep telling it in every, at least in every um, new joiner orientation session that we have in our uh, office. This is about uh, the book Alchemist. So in the book Alchemist, uh, they say that, um, you know, a son tells his father that you have to go and find out about the secret of happiness. The secret of happiness and go to this other town where there's a very rich man staying there. He's very rich, very successful and very content. So he's very successful, so he sort of symbolizes happiness and success. So go to him and find out the secret of happiness or so. So this boy goes to him and says, I have come here to learn about the secret of your happiness. What is the secret of happiness? And the, the, the old man replies that I'll tell you, but do one thing. I'll put a spoon in your mouth, which has got, you know, which has got oil. So you put this spoon in your mouth and carry this oil all through my house. So you understood? You, you carry this, this spoon of oil all through my house. Just take care that you don't drop any, any oil there. The, there should be no spillage in terms of oil or so. So our boy goes throughout the house and for two hours he, is, he keeps going around because it's a large house and he comes back and you know the the spoon is full no drops have actually dropped or so and he says uh, oh very good i see that you know you've not dropped anything from your spoon but did you see my house so he says no sir i couldn't see your house because i was only focusing on the oil so to speak he says don't believe a man whose house you haven't seen so go back again and see my persian carpet and look at my curtains and look at my lovely garden and thing like that or so. So he again goes and he comes back after about one hour or so. So he says, uh, did you see my house? He says, yes, of course I saw your house. It was beautiful and lovely curtains and thing like that. But he says, but what happened to the oil in your spoon? It's all dropped. There's nothing in your this thing. So he says, the secret of happiness is to preserve those that spoon not have anything drop and yet see everything around. So this is the beauty that the world has given you. So, the house basically symbolizes the world around us has got many beautiful things, but the oil in the spoon is what your life goals and your, your uh, you know, focus area should be. So, you have your focus and yet look at everything around and enjoy that life also. If you keep only your focus on the oil, then you'll miss out on all the beautiful things that life has to offer. If you look everything at the beautiful things, then you don't focus on what you have to do in terms of life. So I end here. I have spoken too much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions?
sorry say it again uh, uh, in between one of the slides you mentioned that you'll talk uh, later about monetizing where it is possible about like monetizing hobby yes if it is possible so i think monetization as a realization comes to you only when you 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 start finding that you know i am bloody good at this i am very good at this so when i started writing my book and i probably showed it to one or two people and people said no this is not bad you can actually publish it and if you publish it maybe people will buy it or so so that way i monetized it or when i started playing tennis i realized that i could get into a tournament where i could actually win some prize money or so but that's just my example there were examples of as i said harley davidson there was example in terms of the facebook mark zuckerberg that you know he thought that his hobby can actually get him some money and you know the amount of money he got is enough so uh, that's where i think uh, you know you don't consciously start a hobby to monetize it but if you think that you are very good at it and if you know your what what i call as people of influence people who can actually give you the the best of advice without any you know any ulterior motive then you can definitely try in terms of monetizing it and the other bit is uh, you know our ceo keeps saying one thing that you know you must have a passion passion for doing something the second ingredient is also important you must also be good at doing that thing so uh, my passion for painting is just a passion i am not good at it so you must have a passion for it and you must be good at it then you can monetize it yes uh, good evening sir Sir, actually, my question is from your uh, first ever slide. That was definition of uh, uh, hobby. So, in that, it was written that uh, it is something that is uh, what you are doing out of your regular routine. That's right. Now, I have also heard that if you want to achieve success, then you put uh, you should put your hobby into your into passion and then into profession. Then you will be having great success. Like you have given some examples, like Chetan Bhagat. so nowadays chetan bhagat nobody remembers as an iim graduate he is a great writer so i mean don't you think that uh, definition should be changed like harsha bhogle is also iim graduate but is a, a cricket commentator now sir if they were so good at it they could have actually stopped doing an mba chetan bhagat was a very su successful banker before he actually turned into a writer so he first ensured that he's got the money in the bank he first ensured that he has made his millions he was a very successful banker in singapore and in the process he also realized that his passion lies in writing and he can take a conscious break leave banking and have an alternate career because he is very good at it and it's his hobby similarly you know there are other examples where people you know first they'll ensure that they do their their whatever they are supposed to do see if i do poetry while i am working then i am sure i won't be able to do a good job of neither you know i won't be able to even you know work well i won't be able to write well as well so i think you have to do it outside your uh, you know what you earn for a living because if i don't mention about that to jo naukri hai usse bhi jaoge so it is better that you sort of ensure that you are good at what you do then you can also use that creative hobby or pursuit or so uh, to a greater advantage so to speak i mean i'll never advise somebody to not uh, you know i mean unless and until you really believe you've got the passion to believe that you will be very very successful i mean we've got these actors and all who i mean amita bachchan he was he was a Uh, executive in a company called birds and company in 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 calcutta and uh, and he told his he wrote to his father saying that i want to leave that job and come to bombay in terms of following this and he actually got a real uh, you know whiplashing from his father so to speak but you you've got to be courageous as well and you've got to also believe that you are extremely good in that so uh, but i would normally suggest that you you keep doing what you're doing just to ensure that there is enough money to keep the kitchen fire burning so then only try and follow yes sir can you please recite some poem ho oh. <laughs> of course my poem right <laughs> uh any of your favorite part of it any of 
favorite part of it. I mean, you know, then that's actually injustice to the rest of them. Uh, you mind if I read probably I'll, I'll actually read uh, I'll actually read the one which I think has actually been uh, most liked at least on Instagram. Give me a minute please. I'm just trying to find my own favorite. So, uh, this actually did not get too much of Instagram likes, but it is my favorite, so to speak. Uh, the next life will carry its own breath, its own sun and its own death. But lend me some memories to spill over the next birth. This lifetime is too meager to laugh and cry along. So this, I, what I'm trying to say is that this lifetime is too meager for, you know, uh, for anybody to laugh and cry along. So give me, lend me some, some moments of the next birth also. So uh, this one actually did not get too many Instagram likes because maybe only I wrote, I understood what I wrote, so to speak. Uh, but... Um, I'm actually trying to find something which is, which was uh, probably uh, appreciated by others as well. Sorry? Yeah. Okay, so this is a s small one. Uh, it's called soul eyes. Atma ki It's called soul eyes. If you could let me see once through the soul's eyes. So I'm asking God, if you could let me see once through the soul eyes when I am gone, I would see who lays the wreath and who smiles beneath. Kisne shraddha ke pool chadai aur korn hasra tha when I'm gone. So that was the, you know, that was the poem. Thank you. Enough ever <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. So, sir, writing is something, you know, that is like favored, at least for people who are in communication something. But then how do you deal with the writer's block, as you said, you know, sometimes for work also you face that, sometimes for personal pursuit also you face that. So what are some tricks where we can… Oh, that's a brilliant question because you can actually see it in work, you can see it in sport, you can see it in every aspect of life. And uh, what do people do? The latest is sportsmen. When Virat Kohli was not doing well. He actually put his bat away for one month. He did not look at his bat for one month. Okay. When um, Roger Federer, you know, started losing in tennis in third round, you know, they all champions think that, you know, they have an ego. So they, if they don't reach the final, then it is no good. And when you start losing in the third round, which means that, you know, you've become jaded mentally, physically and things like that. So what he did is he says, for six months, I will take an absolute break and do nothing about it. Because when your hobbies or creative pursuits also become jaded, that's why the writer's block comes in. That's why your workers, this thing comes in. Then they say that to refresh yourself, because oh, oh, Hindi make word hota hai, Indriya. Agar aapki indriya hi kaam karna band kar dein, you know, if your senses don't really work along, 
then you have to give it a break and let the soul regenerate itself, let the strength regenerate itself. So that's why they say, take a break and, and sort of charge yourself. By charging does not mean that when you are not playing for one month or so, it does not mean that you don't exercise also. It just says that, you know, don't associate yourself with that sport actually. You train physically, the physical element must be there. But, so when I have a writer's block, I realize, because what happens is, when I write two lines, and I am not able to write the third line or when I feel that whatever I've written is absolute crap, I am even I'm not liking it, I want to throw it away. Then I start writing, I mean I'll try it two days later. I still find that, you know, that's the issue. I try two days later, I still find the same issue. Then I put it away. I absolutely put it away and I say I'll not write for it. Let it come naturally because even the creations come naturally to you. I mean, you know, you don't really sit down and say, I'll write a poem, or I'll write a, you know, an absolute book or something like that. It should come naturally to you or so. So for that, you have to take a break, maybe forget about it. Don't consciously think that, you know, you are, uh, it's like anything, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's not a machine that you will keep producing. It's not chat GPT. So you have to ensure that, you know, if you are to do something out of your own human mind, and you are not producing that juices or so, then you have to put it away and, and kind of, you know, forget about it. It will come naturally. I mean, once a writer, always a writer. Once a player, always a player. So it will come, you know. It's like when you sit, after you've learned driving, when you sit in front of the car, even after 20 years, you will still know how to drive. So just put it away and kind of, you know, uh, see that whether it comes back to you in one week, 10 days. I mean, it will come naturally to you that, you know, let me write something. I'm feeling that thing to write. So that way it will help. And similarly in work, I think if you think, you know, my father used to always tell me that whenever I get a, got a very difficult email or a very difficult situation to do it, so he used to say, wo chitthi utake apne drawer mein dal do. and give it two days time. I mean, presuming you have two days time, Nowadays, nowadays, I mean, you know, when you have an income tax query or whatever, you don't have two days time. But uh, presuming that you have two days time, just put it into the drawer and wait for, you know, that um, response to come in. So, uh, but if you try in that disturbed mind to write it, then you will not be able to, you know, do anything about it. So, I used to always say, put it aside and then, you know, approach it with, uh, with a fresh mind, maybe sometime later or something. So it's not necessarily a writer's block, it is just an action block. Uh, so that way. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you have worked for almost, uh, I think, 10 years. So what uh, life advice uh, you will give to every uh, new. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boss, it is too. <laughs> uh, no, first advice I'm giving follow a hobby. Oh, uh, but um, see, I am no barometer for success. I am no index in terms of, uh, you know, the first thing I would say is uh, find your own strength. Find your own strength and your own weakness. I think most of the times we look elsewhere, we say this person is successful, let me follow him. Or that person is successful, let me follow him. He's not you, you're not him. He must have gone through his own struggles, own failures, own problems and things like that. So I think what you have to do is you have to realize what your strengths are and are you, uh, you know, doing justice to those strengths or not? Are you being able to do, I mean, you cannot after 30 years of your life say, Are main kuch achha kar sakta tha. I mean, uh, you know, that achha can be at any point in time. You can start any time uh, or so. so uh, the second advice that I would go with, it is never too late. Uh, I mean, you can pick up a course at the age of 35, you can pick up a course at the age of 50. I was just telling my team today, I met a gentleman today who's done CPA, Certified Public Accountant at the age of 50. His, he could not complete his CA and his final group is pending since 2001. 
22 years he is written it off he thinks that he cannot be he cannot do it the last attempt that he gave i mean from 2001 till 2005 or 6 he kept giving attempts and he didn't succeed but last year he realized or i think a year before he realized that you know he can probably do a cp or so so i would always say that till the time the body is ticking you know you can do anything any time so don't lose that hope and do something uh, because sitting here and valuing in self pity is possibly the worst thing you can do so uh, do something that's the only advice i would give anyone yes so rajiv you talked about two hobbies one is more emotionally as well as creative side um, wherein you can't force yourself to write as you mentioned and the other one is physically wherein you have to appear every day to play tennis right so it's about consistency and even knowing the fact that we are working in a culture wherein you know we are almost busy um, so how did you f manage a time and to stick with that hobby for almost a decade or more so how is that this is possible? tennis this tennis, is tennis yes okay. so i as i said you know there has to be a worm inside you there has to be something which which uh, provokes you i was a sportsman and maybe the the sportsman hobby of the time when i wanted to do it did not get fulfilled so when i got the chance to pick up a racket and i liked the sport i liked the overall you know maybe gave expression you know for me to uh, you know maybe enjoy the thing and um, and also it was physically good for my you know uh, my body or so so initially they always say that if you do it 21 days it becomes a habit that's not necessarily true but it should uh, you know it should somehow ignite you it should somehow you should do it more out of uh, that you know i'm i i mean i keep telling my uh, i mean people like you that if i don't play tennis for two days it's like a smoker's withdrawal symptoms i get those withdrawal symptoms that you know i start feeling bad about it and that's a good thing because you know i'm not doing something harmful to my body i'm trying to do something so maybe initially it was the interest part of it maybe i got some initial success so it became a passion maybe somebody told me that you know oh it's good for your body it's good for your heart and things like that maybe it was a combination of everything or so but all those positives every time i thought in terms of leaving it maybe those positive maybe i got successful so it's a combination of factors but then you have to start liking it to to the extent of you know almost like worshiping it so that way it it so there was no conscious uh, this thing but today if i don't do it then i have a problem so and then then as i said there were benefits also i found it beneficial in my work i found that the day i started playing tennis i uh, i realized that uh, i could do better in my work there was a problem i could handle it the way i handled it in tennis in terms of you know being down but you can always come back and all so you draw parallels there's an inner game of tennis that always happens so maybe i could relate to that thank you rajiv <laughs> okay so can i say a, a, just a thanks to everybody see i would i would want to thank all of you uh for just sitting and listening to my story uh whether it is a success or a failure that's not for anybody to decide that's not for me to decide as well i just wanted to share some life experiences i just wanted to share what gave me some pleasures gave me some benefits and and maybe it can work for you um you know i'll probably end by saying that there is a hidden nerve in all of you there is definitely a hidden nerve in all of you whether it is 
uh, and that hidden nerve could be anything it could be uh, you know it could be writing it could be uh, singing it could be and you don't need to be good at it that's a fallacy that you need to be good at it or so uh, i said you need to be good at it only if you want to monetize it but you don't need to be good at it to follow a hobby right but you find your hidden nerve because if you don't find it uh, you know god also tells us that there'll be things that he or she would teach us but then there are things that you to find yourself so find your hidden nerve find your passion find what you want to do what you you know as i said you i get withdrawal symptoms so find that hidden nerve and i would also suggest there are people around that you can you know that suppose my team talks to me and i find somebody is good at it so i'll try and say find your hidden nerve find that particular thing and start doing it maybe in the process you will find some other hidden nerve or so and maybe this one will be and and that could be your true answer that could be your true bearing maybe that's what you want to you you know that's what your life's uh, answer is so that could be a uh, so so find your hidden nerve and find that passion that can drive you after a point in time deadlines successes accomplishments don't meet anything what what means is whether you have lived a complete life or not so you know that's something that you should definitely practice thank you very much so wonderful it is uh, it was rajiv bhai um, as he rightly said uh, the how we should be uh, pursued it should not be a project actually which you do is for a small time and then give it uh, up actually it should come from within you should like it and you should like it forever i remember a, a group of friends uh, who used to uh, like the theater so they got a common time and it was raat ko 11:30 12 baje ikatthe hote the aur kahan ikatthe hote the ek jo restaurant tha wo 11 baje band ho jata tha aapko pata hai na raat ko band ho jata hai fir wo kursi ke upar table ke upar kursiyan rakh ke sab waiter chale jate hain तो उस रेस्टोरेंट में जैसे ये कॉरिडोर दिख रहा है ना आपको वैसा उसको स्पेस मिलता था और वो वहाँ जाके थिएटर का प्रैक्टिस करते थे एंड टू ऑफ देम आर नाउ रिनाउंड एक्टर्स टुडे एक्चुअली सो व्हेन यू हैव इट इन यू द एंड अदर थिंग ही सेट इज दे शुड नॉट बी बर्डन ऑफ सक्सेस एक्चुअली यू शुड परस्यू इट फॉर द सेक ऑफ इट बिकॉज यू आर लाइकिंग इट बिकॉज यू आर डूइंग इट सो द मोर यू डू इट the excellence will come automatically and there will be a base i know my one of my friends the son who used to play guitar for his own uh, hobby sake actually and today is invited uh, for the special occasions uh, with the fee of uh, 50000 1 lakh rupees 75000 rupees so he has monetized it also besides doing his own uh, regular uh, the 9 to 5 job also actually so it can happen that you can you will be able to monetize it but even if you don't it will keep you alive as he rightly said when you are having in the burden of uh, mundane uh, jobs when you want to get out of it or you are feeling low this is something which will keep you you will go to a fellow friend who is into the same hobby and they can it you know? so keep it up and always uh, uh, this room i uh, matlab पहली बार जो उन्होंने सबसे पहले कहा था कि देर आर मिथ्स एक्चुअली मेरे पास टाइम नहीं है या मेरे को ये है या मेरे को वो है वो अपने आप से झूठ बोलने वाली बात है वैन यू वॉन्ट टू परस्यू इट यू विल बी एबल टू डू इट वेयर देर इज विल देर इज अ वे एक्चुअली सो यू विल बी एबल टू कुछ लोग बोलते हैं रीडिंग का टाइम नहीं है और कुछ लोग हैं जो रात को सोने से पहले कम से कम दस पेज पढ़ के ही सोते हैं सो इट इज अप टू यू हाउ ऑनेस्ट यू आर योर सेल्फ टू योर सेल्फ एक्चुअली एंड दस वेयर आई थिंक इट लाइज विद इन अस so thank you so much for sharing your own and i think it has been inspiring also and as you rightly uh, showed um, we have seen the poetry book also coming out of it when he first time said i was actually did the surprise but then i thought yes that's how it has to be and uh, more are coming i'm sure <laughs> so keep writing and keep sharing with us thank you thank you everybody and uh, this is a barcode here you uh, i request to all of you to please follow the ama Uh, programs and ama social social media handles so that you are updated on uh, day to day programs and you can choose 
and most of our programs are uh, decided well in advance and announced well in advance so you are uh, you are you're able to you know plan your life to if you want to attend something thank you everybody thank you so much for attending the program